Hi there. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can send select items from a Microsoft list or indeed documents from a document library via email using Power Automate. So we're going to build a very intuitive interface on our SharePoint list or document library. It will allow us to make a multiple selection of items or documents and then we can trigger that flow directly from our list or library. In doing so, those items or documents will be selected and then sent as an email. So if I jump into my Microsoft list, you can see in the example here, I have a series of car manufacturers in our details column. And then the functionality we're looking to implement is based on these two columns here, the include column and the run flow column. And we're actually using the new functionality that's detailed in this document here called the custom row action. So that enables us to launch a specific action on a parent item. So we're able to basically update a list item or launch a flow. So the particular actions we're going to look at today are the set value, which enables us to set the value of a field name and the execute flow, which will allow us to launch a flow based on the flow ID. Now, jumping back onto my Microsoft list, if we look at this include column here, this is based on a yes, no data type. And at the moment, we're displaying an icon, which is a plus based on include being equal to no. Now, if I click on that, we're actually then using that new function to update that item to become yes. And by becoming yes, it will then display the icon of a tick. So I've now selected Ford by basically setting the value of include to yes for this particular item. If you pay particular attention to the top right hand corner, if I make another selection, we can see that the list item is updated as I click on that icon. Again, if I decide to exclude Ford, I can tick it or click it and the icon will change back to a plus, meaning the value has now been updated from yes back to no. So we'll go ahead and make a selection. I'll pick five of the manufacturers you can see here, and then we're going to run the flow based on these buttons that you see displayed here in this run flow column. So each of these buttons will trigger a flow based on a select item. And that's the thing to note is that we're taking advantage of the fact that you can run a flow direct from a SharePoint list or library based on the trigger for a select item or for a select file. Now, when I click on this button or any of these buttons, it will run the flow based on this particular item that I've clicked on. Now, this is just a little trick for us because basically we want to run the flow, but then ultimately we want to select all the items that we've set the include column to yes. So you'll note on the right hand side, now that I've clicked on one of these buttons from the run flow column, we have the prompt to run our flow and it's going to run my flow called solution email selected list items. If I go ahead and click go, that will now trigger my flow and it will go behind the scenes, get all the items that have this value set to yes, generate an HTML table, send the email and then actually reset these values back to no. And you, you would have seen there, if you're paying attention, that all of the ones that were previously ticked have now reverted back to the plus. So those values have now been set back to a no. So if I jump into my email, you can see that we have my email now for the cars chosen. I chose five of those particular manufacturers and they are now here listed in a basic HTML table. If I then jump onto my document library, I have a very similar functionality. Again, I have an include column, but this time I've used a slightly different set of icons. I have this icon outline here for an unticked uh, selection. And then when I make a selection, we have the tick box. So I'll go and select Citroen and also select Voxel. And again, it doesn't matter which of these buttons I, I click on, but by doing so, it will launch my flow. And on this occasion, rather than it being for the solution based on sending selected items is based on selected documents, which we'll use the for a select file trigger. So if I go ahead now and click on go, what I'll do behind the scenes, as before, it will do a query of this document library, got all documents where include is set to yes. It will then get the file content of these two files, create an array, 
attach it to our send email action and send us an email. Now, if I jump back into my email, we can see here that I've received that uh, email now with these two attachments for both Voxel and Citroen as expected. So let's jump back into our Microsoft list and have a look at how this is configured. So first of all, if we have a look at the include column, I'm going to go into the column formatting by going to column settings and format this column. And uh, you can see that I have some JSON code, which I will supply in the description and it, so that you can uh, copy and try this yourself. But the, the main point to, action, uh, to, to note even, sorry, is this custom row action. So what it's doing, it's calling set value and it's changing the include column. So if you were to use this on your own SharePoint document library, but on a different column name, you need to update this value here to your column name. Basically, if that current field is true, then it sets it to zero. Otherwise, it sets it to one. And then we have this attributes feature down the bottom here. Again, using an if expression, if that current field is true, then we display the accept icon, otherwise we display the add icon. So the add icon is for no, the accept icon, which is a tick, is for yes. Now, if I was to rem remove that and uh, save and just jump back into our SharePoint list or our Microsoft list, you can see that that formatting has disappeared and there's now no functionality there to set this value. If I go into edit in grid mode, I can go and tick based on the out of the box functionality that we have. If I exit grid mode, you can see that we now have a tick. But if I try and click on them, all that happens is I am able to select the item. I'm not able to update that value. So if we just go and add that uh, formatting back in again, back into format col uh, columns, into the advanced mode, I can get rid of the default JSON that's provided and paste back in those values, hit save, and we've now got that functionality that allows us to tick and untick values based on that selection. Now, if we have a look at the run flow, very similarly, we go into the column settings, and we go into format this column, and we have some JSON code again, but the particular piece we're looking to pay attention to is again this custom row action, but this time the action is based on execute flow. So it's based on this ID you see here, which is our flow ID. So ending in BE7, if I was to jump into my flow, you can see in the URL that the flow ID is ending BE7. So it's this value here that you'd want to copy and paste into the parameters for running your flow. You can also change the text, which is the header, which in my case, I put run my flow. And of course, the button that you click on, which said go exclamation mark. So I'll go ahead and just come out of that. And that just demonstrates how you can set up these two columns. Let's go ahead now and look at my two flows. So as I mentioned before, the flow is based on either for a selected item or if we go into the other flow for a selected file. Now, it's crucial that you use one of these two triggers because if you attempt to call a flow from your SharePoint list or your SharePoint document library using one of the other triggers, like the manual trigger, for instance, you will find that it will just spin and not run. So if we look at the for a selected item, as I mentioned during the demonstration, it's based on getting uh, the flow to run using the selected item, but then we pretty much disregard what comes back as part of that trigger body because ultimately what we want to be able to do is to get the items where the include column is equal to one, i.e. true. So once we've got those items based on include equaling true, we can then go through and apply to each and simply update that item so that the include is set back to no. Now it gets a bit confusing because obviously the value behind the scenes is a, a one, but uh, from the front end, it's a yes or a no, but something to bear in mind if you're using that type of data type. But what we're doing here is we're basically resetting those items that were set to yes back to no so that we can make a selection next time. 
So now that we've gone through the apply to each, one of the things that I did do here was go into settings and apply concurrency, just so that we had an efficient flow. But then once that apply to each is finished, we are creating an HTML table, and that's based on the value of the get items from above. And then in my case, I've just specified the header and the values based on what's available to me dynamically. And then finally, using the send an email, I do have a fixed email address, but we could make that dynamic. And I'll maybe demonstrate that once I've covered my other flow, but all I've done is provide the HTML table as the input of the body. So if we now have a look at the example for a selected file, very much the same, it's triggered based on a select file, but we're not particularly interested in the trigger output there because we don't care which button you've clicked on. What we are interested in though is the get files action because we're gonna get all the files again where this include column equals one, i.e. yes. Now the apply to each is slightly different this time. First of all, we need to get the file content. So this is based on the identifier from our get files action. And we're getting the file content for each of these files that have been brought back from that action. Then, similar to the uh, items, we're updating the file properties this time so that we can change that column for include back to no. And then finally, we're creating a, an object of the file name and the body. Now, if this is something you've not seen before, I do cover this in more detail in one of my other videos, um, showing you how you can send multiple attachments via email. And I suggest you maybe watch that if you've, if you've not come across this before. But basically, I'm building an object of the file name and the content. And then within send an email, I'm able to specify the attachment here as a single expression, which is outputs based on the name of the compose action. So you'll see the compose action is called file content. And if I hover over that block there, you can see the expression is outputs and in single quotes, file content. And so that basically gets all our files and sends it via email. So if I jump back to the list item uh, solution, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add an input. So you'll see here we have this add an input option. And what I can specify here is an email address. So send to, so we'll call it send to, and this will prompt our user when they send or select the button on our Microsoft list to provide an email address. Now, the other thing I need to do is to dynamically update this value here, because at the moment it's fixed. I'm gonna go into the add dynamic content, and if we scroll down to the bottom, hopefully, we will see email. So I believe this is the value we're looking for here. So I'll go ahead and hit save, and I'm gonna jump back to my original Microsoft list, and uh, then I'm gonna make a selection. So we'll go ahead and pick a few of our cars. In fact, I'll pick the top five in the, in the list here. I'm gonna select any of the buttons. We'll see the same interface as before, launch up on the right-hand side, and because we've changed that flow, it's now gonna request that we supply an email address. So you'll see here, I need to complete this send to field, and I'm going to put in my colleague, Henrietta, and uh, I'll just add myself in as well, so I get the email to both myself and to Henrietta, and we'll go ahead and hit go. So if I jump into my email, again, cars chosen, I've chosen those top five, we can see that Henrietta is in the two, but also if I bring up my other browser, I'm in Henrietta's email here, you can see there's her, her profile, and she too has also received that email based on that selection and the dynamic email addresses that we supplied as part of the trigger for that flow. So some of the considerations for this solution the first thing to consider is if this Microsoft list is accessed by more than just one person, then obviously you can't go ahead and make your own selections based on one column. You could, however, configure a column for yourself and for your colleagues, so you've all got your own unique columns, and then you can make your own selections. And of course, you can configure your views to include or exclude your colleagues' include columns. Um, so that you don't necessarily see the ones that they have selected. 
Now you have to wait for your flow to complete each time because every time that flow completes, if we just do a quick refresh, it will obviously reset those values back to no so that you're ready to make your next selection. Um, and as I mentioned previously, depending on uh, which one we go for, if you're updating a list or updating a document library, make sure that you use the correct trigger either for a selected item or for a selected file. So I'll drop into the description the links for the documentation here. I've also seen a couple of good uh, examples of some of this new functionality being used. Again, I'll drop their links into the description. I suggest you go and have a look at what they've managed to achieve so far with the set value. There's some really great use cases. And uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers. Thanks for watching.